I love coming to anniversary services <laughs> because they're joyful celebrations and it's wonderful to be with you here today for this 90th anniversary of faithfulness in the community of Pickering and in celebrating all the ways in which you live out the gospel by living that out in the community. So thank you, Mayor David, for being here today with the congregation and thank you to all of you for the ways in which you show what we're called to do and be in Christ by our baptism in the ways that you connect with your community and care for your neighbors. Do you remember December 2013? When you woke up to a world encased in ice. The power was out, trees were down, and the roads were impassable. And maybe just for a moment you sighed and dreamed about the possibility of being on a beach in the Caribbean in the warm sun with the blue seas and the breeze wafting by. Or maybe there was a time when your life was in chaos, a marriage crumbling in bitterness and wrangling, a fruitless search for a job and a living wage, a spouse, a parent, a child even, struggling with chemotherapy. And you, dream. you dreamed of a time when you would be in a relationship that was joyful, faithful, and life-giving. When you would be working in a job that challenges and fills and pays the bills. And when your family would be healthy and whole. We all dream. We dream of times when life will be as we believe it should be. And all around us, there are visions of what that dream might be. Have you ever seen those advertisements for cash for life? Life is to be riding on an ATV across the beach or in a speedboat. But of course, we as the followers of God and Jesus Christ know that there is a dream for the world that is much richer and deeper. It is a dream that proclaims the glory of God and loves the neighbor as self. It is a dream for the world that the scriptures give us glimpses of over and over again. And we've heard several today. The first one from Isaiah, a people in exile, a people who long to come back to God, or at least that Isaiah is calling back to God, and the dream of that great banquet. You can almost see it a bit like Christmas dinner over and over again of rich foods, mature wine. When death is swallowed up in victory, no more tears, no more disgrace. It's people united. And then in Revelation, that great vision of John in exile, in which there are sweeping visions of God's final victory, wickedness and sin pass away, and a new heaven and a new earth emerge. There are apocalyptic visions prior to this chapter of beasts and dragons, of destruction of horsemen and swords. But today in this passage, we hear that wonderful tender ending of it all. When there will be no more mourning or crying or pain and God's home will be in our midst And so there's a great sigh of relief as we can dream a time when God's vision will come to fruition. Is it any wonder that these passages are so often read at funerals in the midst of our grief at the loss of a loved one, 
finding comfort in that promise of what is to be, even if it is not now. And of course, we read them at All Saints Day as we remember all those who have gone before us, all those who have been faithful to God's vision. But we also have today the reading of Jesus at the raising of Lazarus. Mary and Martha are caught in their grief and all of the what ifs, what if Jesus had come on time and healed and restored Lazarus before his death. But they trust. And Jesus comes to the tomb and weeps. Not just the tears of empathy and sorrow with Mary and Martha, but the word in Greek literally means tears of anger and frustration. And which of us has not cried in anger and frustration at the powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God, to quote our baptismal questions. Which of us has not cried in anger and frustration at disaster, at pain, at suffering, at unfairness and injustice, at the chaos that the world can create and find itself in? And Jesus, at this moment of standing at the tomb of Lazarus, is weeping for Lazarus, for Martha, for Mary, and frankly, for everything that he knows is coming and will be. For he stands on the very brink of his own confrontation with the powers of this world that would block God's dream of justice and mercy and compassion. And he knows that when he said to his disciples that this illness of Lazarus will be for God's glory. He knows that as he wept in anger at the tomb of Lazarus and he knew that when he ordered the stone removed and shouted out, Lazarus, come out. He knew that at this moment he is acting out something that will be acted out again as he enters into death, as he gives himself into this pain and shows us that that is not the final word. That resurrection and new life is always God's final word. And so despite what we see around us, despite the sorrows, the pain, the injustices, the death, the illness, the war, the disasters, God is preparing us for that victory of God, that new heaven and new earth. But most importantly, and even more than that, not as an un unattainable longing for something that will happen after we die or sometime in a long distant future, but something that we can begin to live right now. Something that we can say to the world, we starts here. It starts with me. It starts with this community. When I live as God has called me to with love and compassion and justice and forgiveness because that is what God has poured into my heart. And so when we begin to live now, God's dream in Jesus begins to break through. There are pockets of light and glimpses of hope. Think of the power of some of the dreams of the past that have changed our world. Probably the most famous speech about a dream. Martin Luther King Jr. saying, I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be evident that all are created equal. I have a dream that my little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low and the rough places shall be made plain and the crooked places shall be made straight and the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Or someone like Desmond Tutu, Archbishop Desmond Tutu in South Africa who said there is no such thing as a hopeless case. 
Our God is an expert at dealing with chaos, with brokenness, with all the worst we can imagine. God created order out of disorder, cosmos out of chaos, and God can do so always, can do so now, in our personal lives and in our lives as nations and globally. Indeed, God is transforming the world now through us because God loves us. And think about those who had a dream here in Pickering of a community of God's people right here. A community of God's people built 90 years ago as a community that would reflect the light of Christ to transform its neighborhood, to care for the poor, to tend the sick, to nurture the young and old in faith, and to worship God, and, if needed, build a building. <laughs> Can I remind you that we don't need the building? <laughs> and that is what it is to be a saint. It is all those who are seeking to live God's dream right now, as we catch glimpses of God's possibilities for this world, to be the light, to be those through whom the light shines. From the person who greets everyone as if they've met a child of God, to those who work in the food bank, the clothing ministry, to those who reach out in pastoral care and prayer, to those who lead in worship and music and dance, to those who touch the life of a neighbor with the love of Christ. And so when we are crushed sometimes, and we are, by despair, by personal pain, or by the corporate pain of a world that often seems to be in chaos and destruction, by what we cannot understand or cannot change, we weep with Christ the tears of anger and frustration at what is not, but what might be. And are called to remember that Jesus entered into that pain and guaranteed to us that death is not the final answer. God's dream of a new world will come and we can be part of it now. Live it now and create the possibilities for its full coming. I have a dream, and it is God's dream. Amen.